Hey, how's it going everyone? Brad Smith here with HealthLink. I'm looking for the top health and fitness experts throughout the world. Today I'm joined with another top expert, Rias Fredericks. How are you today, Rias? Doing good, Brad. Thanks. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. I know you're joining me from LA, but you've been all over the world. Uh, you were born in Australia, and now you've created this awesome new product, uh, Bula Ball. So if you could just introduce yourself real quick to the audience. Uh, Rias Fredericks. Uh, I was actually born in South Africa. Oh, uh, but my parents migrated to Australia when I was four. No problem, Brad. <laughs> and uh, I, I came from a background of parents that were athletes and I was always athletic as a kid. I was fortunate enough to go on to uh, play rugby at a high level and eventually become a professional, which, is, uh, which took me to the East Coast of Australia, to Hong Kong. Uh, to Europe and eventually over to, to LA for Santa Monica. So I've had a very uh, fortunate life as an athlete. That's awesome. Um, and you look like an athlete, especially I was looking at your pictures on your website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so very fortunate to, to have an athletic body and use my body for something that I was very passionate about. I loved rugby, um, made so many great friends around the world. And, right. uh, really had a very fortunate life so uh, now I'm married with kids uh, and stay home dad blessed again to be a stay home dad uh, you know unfortunately my uh, my back problems led to uh, a full rupture of the disc right at the end of my rugby career I went into back surgery just as we were beginning to start our family and um, again you know I wasn't that excited about being a stay home dad I have to be honest with you but after going through the process, I'm very, very grateful, very lucky uh, to so, have a so you, healthy kid. You injured kid. your back playing in, uh, rugby? So I hurt my back when I was 18. Um, and I, I could have hurt it on the rugby field, but the, the actual injury was sustained when I was at work doing a very safe, healthy lift, which is probably a common story for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and that's when I... I uh, herniated the disc. So at that stage, you know, I was 18, still very young and healthy. Uh, went went in to see the doctors and, and try to figure out exactly what it was. Uh, very frightening time, obviously, um, like all people who hurt their backs because it's such a vulnerable position on our bodies. But uh, one of the most frustrating things for me was we they just I just couldn't get a straight answer on, on what the problem was, um, how how it happened, or what it was caused to. Um, and then I spent the next 12, 18 months um, trying to live and manage with chronic back pain as I went from physical therapist to chiropractor to acupuncturist to natural therapist. And eventually I ended up seeing a, a phenomenal massage therapist um, on a weekly basis um, until the company that I was working for was a little frustrated with, with my medical bills and, and Got a, an occupational health and therapist, which was p basically a personal trainer to uh, physically train and condition me five days a week on top of massage therapy. And, and that was probably what helped me bounce out of pain and, and back into onto the rugby field. Um, but, you know, even, even though I recovered to a certain level, uh, obviously uh, elite fitness, but, you know, that thing that little thing in the back of your mind or you, you know you yeah. constantly get reminders that there still is a, an issue there um, yep. and then eventually it caught up with me at the end of my career so uh before you ever had experienced back pain up until 18 did you really recognize that other people experience back pain like that or it wasn't until you um experienced it yourself and you started realizing how many people actually have back pain back then you know we're, we're talking 20 years ago and, and back then uh, we, you know, they, they didn't know a lot about back pain, you know, and I don't, I don't think it was a very common pr problem. I think people were a lot more active back then. Um, I mean, we we're only talking 20 years, but I grew up on the west coast of Australia where it was a very isolated city. People were very active. Uh, they, they didn't have smartphones or computers back then. Um, and yeah, when it happened, you know, I think I think when people hurt their backs or had back problems that lasted for a long period, um, you were kind of put in the box of maybe it's in your head, 
you know, or it's or it's something that you're making up, um, and and it, it obviously isn't. You know, it's now twenty years so later. People. Yeah, twenty years later. I mean, it's I think what eight out of ten Americans suffer with lower back pain. Uh, we, we're in a, a much more sedentary world where people are spending up to 11 hours a day. You know, the average person is spending 11 hours a day in a seated position, in a sedentary position, which is having uh, really adverse effects on the body. And you're seeing... Like right now? Yeah, like right now. But you're seeing cases of back pain just skyrocketing. You know, I think it's a, yeah. the second most... Um, this, this, this is the second reason that people have days off work. Second highest reason, you know, that people have days wow. off work. So it's a big problem. That's a good, that's a good stat. Mm. Not a good stat, but it's a good stat for you to tell us because most people probably don't know that. Or they probably feel alone when they start experiencing the back thing when really the person sitting next to them at their office desk is probably experiencing the same thing. So, you well, know, for, I, I, I was... Sorry. I was excited to talk to you because, you know, car accidents and sports for me, I experience back pain all the time too. So, you know, it's good to meet somebody with it and then finding a solution for it. You know, once uh, you get to a certain point, you've tried all these other options. So I think it's great that you were able to find a solution. Yeah. So for me, uh, especially when I first hurt my back, the big question was why, you know, like I'm a healthy guy, I'm a healthy kid, I'm athletic, I doing all the right things like why did i hurt my back and um it it and, and then i went on to become an athlete i didn't let that problem stop me from pursuing my passion or my dreams to to want to play at the highest level of competitive sports that i could through rugby um and then i i ended up learning how to manage my condition as i continued with my career uh, which and you know was a lot of private therapy on the side to kind of keep myself going. Um, but I got to a point in LA where the disc had gone from being herniated to fully rupturing. And I saw some, uh, you know, I, I basically saw this one trainer down at Gold's Gym, you know, the, the one in Venice, the famous Gold's Gym. And, and this guy, he's like, I set up an appointment for a meeting uh, for a massage therapy and it was in the gym and I, and I was thinking to myself, where is he going to massage me in this gym? And really he was uh, just extreme forms of um, rolfing where, you know, he's getting extremely deep into the tissue um, and using some of the gym equipment, you know, some of the um, bench press bars and, and uh, you know, this guy was, it was, so painful. It was it was unbelievable. You know, he was like trying to test tissue off my body, um, and I was got to the effective? point where I was like, "Hey!" And I was paying him to do it. Was it effective? <laughs> you know what? I, after six weeks, I said to him, I, "Look, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I, I've got to that point where I just couldn't do it." And he turned around and said to me, "Look, I, I've given you this softball and, and this, you know, PVC piece of pipe to roll out on." And, and I said, it's so painful when I see you, you want me to go home and, and, and do that to myself again. Like I was, I was hot bathing every night for three nights in a row just to try and maintain, you know, try and control that pain that he was dishing out. But as soon as I gave into it and decided, look, this is this, I've hit rock bottom. This is the last place I could possibly go. And I started to do it. And, and the benefit that I received in that first week from, uh, just actively rolling out the tissue, which they, you know, it took me another year to realize it was called self myofascial release. Yeah. But really what it was doing was just hydrating the tissue um, and allowing it to become more elastic and allowing for more movement on, on a really micro level. And when you, when you think about the tension around the bones and the joints and the nerves, just a little bit of extra um, elasticity or freedom for it to move uh, was just magnified and uh, I, I wasn't I was he wasn't able to save me from back surgery because I'd fully ruptured that disc and we'd gone into back surgery but I, I went into into that surgery thinking to myself look when I come out of surgery I've gone through the rehab process multiple times when I come out I'm going to try this 
this new thing. I'm going to add it to my recovery, which was um, self myofascial release, where we get the term bullet ball through using that ball. Um, but because I had an A type personality, I wasn't just going to do it in one, in one location. Like I broke down the tissue in my whole body, but in the process, it helped me learn about the key areas that you need to target to allow the pelvis. Um, and the lumbar spine to get back to more of a neutral position where they can have a, a harmonious relationship. And uh, I was able to recover to to a place that I'd never experienced before. Uh, it's been, geez, it's been almost 10 years since I had surgery. I used to be in therapy every week and I haven't seen a therapist in years. I play social rugby. I've learned how to surf. I went and did a, an intensive yoga teacher training course. I have a strong yoga practice. My back is probably the best it's been since I've, you know, probably before I even heard it. I think it helps to know why, you know, a lot of people I think do the rolling, they use the rollers or they're doing the stretching, but I don't think they know why. So I think it helps if they do their research and see, you know, why are they doing this? What's it actually doing to the muscle? And how is it gonna benefit them? Instead of just joining a fad and getting on the roller like everyone else does. Exactly. And, and the roller is good for certain muscles. So I, the roller is great for the leg muscles, the quads, you know, the IT bands. Uh, but the ball specifically is good for the psoas muscle, which is in, in the front of the abdominal area. And it can go deep into that muscle. And there's literally no other way for you to manually release that muscle unless you see a therapist who, and, and a lot of therapists, you know, don't always go to this muscle when you have back problems. Um, right. So you, first you've got to find a therapist who, who understands what's happening with that muscle and how it's affecting your lower back. And then, uh, but if you can get one of our ball balls and you tuck it into the psoas muscle and you can do it on a daily basis, like on a daily basis, you can start to manually release this muscle, which is, which is the prime mover in lower back pain or, or hip, um, pelvic lumbar dysfunction okay. um, then, and then you add the stretches in with that um, add breaking down the other muscles that are tight that are stopping you know other parts of it and then all of a sudden you know you're starting to attack the, the whole problem instead of just pieces of the problem um, but the, the research now that's come back from the scientific research is rolling out on a foam roller on a ball or other types of tools is the most effective way to create um, hydration and elasticity within not just the, the tissue but the muscle and, and the important part is when they look at the rehab process for any kind of problem everything has been so muscle based so if you've got a problem it's like how do we fit you know there's an imbalance in your muscle so we need to train the weak muscle to make yeah. it stronger whereas you know the imbalance in the muscle we need to roll out the tissue in the, in the most dominant muscle to, to relax it so we can balance it that way while, while doing exercises on the weekend. And, and that becomes way more effective. So, um, there, that, you know, and that's one of the major components, which is the rolling out. But the other component to uh, strengthening your core, which is, you know, you hurt your back and, and everyone's like, every therapist is, we need to strengthen those abdominal muscles which is great. And I spent 20 years doing traditional abdominal exercises to, to strengthen the outer layer of the abdominals and never strengthen the inner layer, which I would learn the hard way um, well, is related to, to breathing. You know, and if anyone's done a Pilates class, they, they do what they call abdominal hollowing, which is a, a breathing technique to strengthen the deepest layer of your abdominals with a transverse abdominal muscle. And that muscle is one of uh, four key muscles in the, the core system that makes up that cylinder that really uh, strengthens us on the deepest level. Okay. Um, so I wasn't in the, in the, in the method that we created the exercise program that I created the bull method. I teach abdominal hollowing, but in actual fact, you need to practice abdominal hollowing every single minute of the day that you can concentrate. Interesting. And, Coming out of surgery, I tested myself. I was like, look, will this work? 
will practicing yeah. abdominal holding every day, will it work? And, um, you know, after, you know, I just freshly had st stitches still in my back. And when you're practicing abdominal holding, you could feel that wow. the uh, stitching area being affected. Man. So that's rough. It was it was rough, but it was an indication that hey, yeah, maybe this can work. Yeah, you know, um, and then it does work. So all right. So ten years ago, you had back surgery. Yeah. Um, at what point did you decide to? Because you are the creator, the owner of Bula Ball. Uh, websites bulaball.com, which I'll make sure I post in the link so people can see this. Um, I don't know if you have one on you or we'll just send them to the website, but I think people need to see it and um, you know, see what it does. But what made you and at what point did you start the company or invent the Bula Ball? So, you know, I just wanted to, to recover. Like my wife was pregnant. Um, I was having serious issues or thoughts like, you know, am I going to be fit enough, healthy enough to be able to load the stroller in the back of the car or pull groceries out of the, or pick up my kid? You know, like um, I was in a bad way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was literally the lowest part of my life going into surgery was, am I going to come out and be normal again? Or, or it wasn't even normal before, but was I going to be just healthy enough to, to be you know, a valuable part of the family. So I was driven to get myself better. Uh, and after, I want to say after a year of rolling out the tissue, practicing the breathing uh, exercises and techniques, um, and that developed into, as my, my body started to shift and you could feel it shifting and changing. And then I, I started to go into what we call now um, fascial stretching where it was okay. stretching the fascial tissue in in the knees and in the, the ankles and the other joints to, to create more elasticity more room for movement um and then i realized that i had something you know i, I like i haven't met a doctor or a therapist or an expert or anyone who could who could shift my fitness and conditioning in my lower back to a point where I was actually starting to to feel stronger, to feel the change. Um, and when I was going through the process of recovering and healing, uh, a friend of mine gave me a book. It was called The Four Hour Work Week. I don't know if you've yeah, come yeah. across that book, you know. And reading the book, it kind of gave me an epiphany, which was, you know, this is my this is my shared experience. I've, I've spent twenty. I've had back pain for twenty years. Yeah, I didn't want it. It kind of happened, you know, when I wasn't ready or, you know, no one is, I guess. But through my through my persistence and, and uh, attitude not to to sacrifice my life because of this, chasing chasing it to the point of breaking, uh, I was able to learn something from it, uh, something valuable, very valuable. And that's when... Uh, ball, ball the idea had kind of gone off in my head um, right. and so I played rugby after with, surgery I played rugby with a lot of Fijians and uh, Bula is a Fijian word for hello it's also a word for life and to live and I remember as a as an athlete just we're programmed if there's something wrong with me I'm going to go to the therapist I'm going to go to the chiropractor I'm going to go to the act someone's going to fix me yeah and and it was this it was this moment of going you know hello to this ball this ball was going to fix me so it kind of the name kind of came out of hello ball you know ball ball hello ball and then oh, okay. and then the muscles that we, we were activating i didn't know that they were they were so tight that they were, they were storing so much tension and pain and it was like hello to the muscle hello <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And then as I got better, baller means life. It means live life. And it gave me new life. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that's, it was fate. But. <laughs> that's, a, that's awesome. I love the name. And it was, you're lucky it was available. That fits perfectly, especially with um, the results you're seeing. Oh, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal results. So, so you, you had back surgery. A year later, you decided to, you know, start the idea. You had the idea to create it. How long was the process of actually getting the product to market? 
getting it for sale. So a year later, we, you know, I thought I had an idea, and I, I didn't even know what rolling around on a ball was called. So I went online and I played around until I found out that it was called uh, self myofascial release. Yeah. Back then, you know, 10 years ago, there was nothing on the computer about self myofascial release. It was a tiny little bit, you know, and, you know, I had to figure out how, what, how would I get the message across, what we could do. Um, but ultimately, too, I was still just at the beginning of learning about where my journey was going. So yeah. two years, two years late, you know, from the beginning, from you know, I kind of started rolling out before surgery. So I was almost at maybe six months to a year into before surgery. So maybe three years later, uh, we, uh, I, I was able to write down and isolate the exercises that were helping me, um, put them into a uh, sequence of, of most important and how and and like. The, you know, the psoas muscles are the hip flexor muscles. So when as we work on the psoas muscles, how do we go from the psoas into the other main hip flexor muscle in your quad, which is also, you know, I, I was suffering from what they call anterior pelvic tilt. And anterior, and, and anterior pelvic tilt is common for people who sit in a chair. And, and the biggest problem with everyone who sits in a chair is in it, while we're in a seated position, the hip flexor muscles are all in, in an engaged position, in a shortened position of like working to lift the leg up as they walk. And as we sit in this position over uh, many years, because as soon as we go into school all the way up to college to working, we're in this position and we're experiencing stress in, in this position. You know, so our body's going into fight or flight. We're, the brain's releasing a lot of uh, hormones, endorphins. Um, and then once that stress passes, all this, all these hormones are still stuck in these muscles. We don't get up, we don't walk it out, we don't stretch it out. And then as that time compounds, this becomes the default mode. So when we go to stand up, you know, this trainer, he described me as a bent nail. You know, instead of standing up and being straight, we're, we're kind of slightly bent. Right? And that slight, that slight, Bend over time, gravity is just working against it, and it's making, you know, the, the muscles tight, the, the uh, connective tissue uh, more brittle, less elasticity, and, and then you're just an accident waiting to happen. You know, the classic guy oh, bent over to pick up the newspaper, and my back went out. Or, yeah. So, okay, so we is I'm I was in a couple car accidents. Um, I have herniated disc, constant back pain. I go to your website and I buy a Bula ball. You're saying you have exercises that I can follow or a place to learn uh, what to do at home with the Bula ball once I purchase it? Yeah, so perfect. Uh, the, Bula ball, the Bula ball is just a product. It's one of the props or tools that we use, uh, but I created a method. So we, it's the Bula ball method. So the method and the ball, it acts as your at-home uh, back pain therapist. So you've, you've got four DVDs in, in a box set, which focuses on the, the lower back and legs. Um, and then we've got the neck and shoulders because the neck and shoulder pain kind of works in, in a similar way. You've got the shoulder girdle, which, which uh, has these two most mobile joints in the way that they move and function. And when they've lost the, their full range of motion, it starts to impinge on the neck and the shoulder and depending on what your posture is like, what your core stability is like. Um, if the spine, once that core stability goes, the spine starts to collapse. So we want to try and get that core stability and push the spine back up. Okay. Um, and then we've got a, a, a stretching video there, which is just key stretches to help start opening your, your uh, mobility up. And so you've got, Basically, you've got three, four explainer videos. You get two bullet balls. Um, if you want to buy, we've got different bundles that we put it in. We've got yoga blocks to, to come in the bundle. We've got a foam roller. But literally, you can go to the site, buy the product, bring it home, and just start practicing it on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the way the program is set, balls are inflatable. It, it'll be very difficult for you to hurt yourself. 
but what I tell everyone, you want to be working in a, in a, in a, between seven to ten, like, but between one to ten, on a pain threshold of about six right. or seven is where you want to want to work. Not a ten. <laughs> Not a ten. Yeah. And anything near a ten, you just don't go anywhere near it. Yeah. You know, work around it until you can start to become more mobile, more elastic, and you you'll see that area where the ten is. It'll start to to dissipate because you've worked in the surrounding areas. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how many days a week do I need to use it, and how long till I see results. Ah, oh, geez. Look, I know it's hard. Everyone's average. Different. average. Everyone's <laughs> different. But the psoas muscles basically are storing so much tension, right? Okay. So I've seen people. I've had clients stick the ball under there and within that first session who just said to me, oh my God, you know, I felt that release in the back. Release, okay. okay. Yeah, so that's summer, in, summer instant. I've had people write to me when they've had instant relief. And when, when, you've, when you're suffering with chronic pain and you've had it for five or six years or a year or one year, whatever it Anything's is. Anything's a relief. You get that relief yeah. and you think, oh, this is going to help me and you stick to it. Then you start to see the, the bigger benefits, just like any exercise program uh, down the line. But if you buy the program, I like to tell people, you know, if you get the four DVDs, cycle them in. Uh, do do a workout, do a DVD. I like to tell people to hot bath after um, having a rollout session to again soothe the muscles. Drink a lot of water, um, and then I, depending on how so, what what stage you're at you know you might have hurt your back or you've had back problems for a year you might have hurt your back and it's been you know you've been working on it for the last four or five years um i like to 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 get people to learn how to walk again you know i know that sounds funny but you know it's kind of like learning how to breathe I, I don't think i know for a fact none of us outside of the yoga community who were or meditation or tai chi or or karate or martial arts you know breathing is a big factor in those yeah. disciplines uh, and and you'll see people joking about i went to yoga and they're constantly talking about breathing but the reality is um breathing is such a powerful tool it's, it's the it's most reason. powerful wellness tool and we don't we're not taught anything about it and most of us are really weak at it um so practicing the correct walking technique while breathing these are the most basic movement patterns that we are you know the first movement pattern is breathing you know the wow. heart and, and and you talk and you get a lot of condition you know people talking about improving movement patterns you know, improve that movement pattern first and you and you'll experience significant benefits and then go out and practice walking properly where it's heel to toe you know soft bend in the knee engaging the core shoulders back um, and then make you know get a correct movement pattern in walking um, will change your tissue your connective tissue the way the way you posture the way you hold yourself uh, which all plays into this massive problem but um, if you can walk one day, bull the ball the next, walk another day, bull the ball the next, you know. Um, if you're into swimming, I think, you know, swimming is a great exercise that you can mix in between. Um, and then, you know, hydrate, drink a lot of water. I really like that you not only created a product that helped you, you found something that would help you. You're able to sell it so it can help other people. But you also added the form and teaching people how to actually use it and not just that, helping them with their breathing and their, their walking, their stretching. You know, I think that's great that you are providing real world activities and real world things that are actually going to help people. So I think it's awesome that you're doing that and thank you for uh, setting that up and helping out as many people as you are. You're welcome. You're welcome. Like if, if when I'm dealing with, when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, um, I have a couple of movement screens uh, that that identifies a lot of problems, and, and they're just two seated moving screens. So being able to sit on your knees or sitting cross-legged, 
So if you can't, and it, and as, as soon as you see what range that people can t just basically sit, I mean, sitting human, you know, human function, can you sit on your knees or can you sit cross-legged? And I know I couldn't do it, you know, and, and that's how it started for me. I was like, listen, this is one of my goals. I need to be able to do this. And then it identifies where you're tight in the adductors or um, where you're tight through the knees or the ankles and how that's going to affect the hips as it's rotating forward or, and how it's affecting the lower back. Um, so, and, but then when, when you explain that to someone and then they can see where their problems are, they can attack those problems yep. the, um, as, they, as they try to get better. But once you can get past that, the risk of you hurting yourself again is significantly low. Okay. Right. Um, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to help. Look, I, I was in a, I was in a holding pattern. I would recover to this level and then get injured and maybe come back down again, come back, never able to hit, go past the ceiling where I knew I was, you know, I wasn't going to hurt my back again. Right. And well, so I'm very fortunate to be at that stage. I think we, uh, you gave a lot of good information and value to people watching also, maybe just motivated, hopefully motivated somebody to try to figure out how to fix their pain. Cause I think a lot of people will try to ignore it or get through life without, you know, trying to take every step. And I'm glad you took every step to realize, Hey, these 10 things didn't work for me, but I finally found something that did. And this might not work for everybody, but you know, just keep finding something that's going to work for you um, or find a good coach, a mentor that can help you along the way. So definitely. So here's, here's, here's the thing that I learned. And, and you can read about it right now. So 20 years ago, they didn't know too much about it. They've done a bunch of case studies and done a bunch of research. And, and this is what, what has come back. To prevent you, you getting back pain, they say that you should exercise and be healthy. And if you <laughs> injure your back, 20 years later, you injure your back, they say you should, the best way to recover is to, is to exercise. Like they're not specific about which exercises, but right. the point is, the point is, whether you, if you're suffering with back pain right now, that your therapist is only going to help you manage that condition, uh, and and that's that's the truth. And if you want to get past that, and, and the best clients that I work with are guys who are maybe athletes, or uh, this rock climber was a great example. You know, he had a, a, a training background. He knew what was. He knew he had to do some exercise. Yeah. And he took the program. And he just like every single day, uh, you know, within six months, this guy was like, was less than six months. Within three months, he was back training, doing the things that he wanted to do while he con sit consistently worked, uh, continued to use the bull ball as part of his exercise program. And I think that's how fitness is going to get is going, especially when you see guys in the gym using foam rollers, post workout, pre workout. Um, it's going to be a part of that routine. But for anyone who's in pain, you know, the only person who's going to help you get out of pain and stay out of pain yourself. Yourself. And um, Bull Ball is a great vehicle for that. You know, and I think um, anyone who's really interested in fixing the problem, that come and check us out. Check us out. Right. 100% money Bula back guarantee. Bullaball.com. Uh, I'll make sure I post the links above or below the video that they're watching. Uh, once they hit that website, I see a form pops up. Where's the best place for them to go? Should they um, see the about section? Should they just start shopping or where should they go? So, you know, um, you can you can check out the whole site, um, go to the method and, and yeah. read about the method and learn about um, what's well, actually okay. what we actually want to change on the body. Um, so, so you can, so you can get your why, like, this is why I'm doing it. Um, and then when you go to the shop page, I think, you know, you can buy the basic packet package, which is the two balls and the four DVDs. And the reason why I, I, I want people, I think it's a great idea to go for the four DVDs. You can get the single if you like. Um, but I'm going to uh, share the screen. Hold on one second. Um, I like the testimonial part also those are all people that have done the yeah there's the testimonials um and one of the, one of the guys on there uh wally who who was the rock rock climber um 
who gives a testimonial. Like I said, he was one of one of our. Um, you know, he's he's probably the best case scenario of someone who got the program and just um, devoted a good chunk of his time to it to make sure that um, he was focusing on it. You know. Sizes uh, of the Boola balls are perfect, and the videos really helped. You can see the screen, right, Rias? Yeah, yeah, I can see the screen. Highly uh, recommend trying. Um, let's see, a method to make you and keep you pain free. And then here's you right here, cured my chronic back pain. Okay, awesome. And then um, if anybody is on here, you go to the about section here at the top right, and you'll see the Boola method. And uh, you yeah, said this is a good place to start. Want to learn about the method? You want to you want to get some good insight. That so for when I, when I hurt my back, the biggest you know the biggest problem for me was like why like why did it happen? Right. Um, and it and and I was born with a condition called a hernia, which means it's it's the weakening of the abdominal wall. So for me, um, I, I, my anterior pelvic tilt was happening immediately, you know because. That muscle, the the transverse right here, where you got it there, that transverse okay. muscle was weak. So when we look at opposing forces, the transverse abdominal opposes the the the, so, the psoas muscles. So if they're both strong, you've got good posture, like they're holding you in the right place. If one of them becomes weak and the other one becomes over dominant, then you start to see a shift in the pelvic floor on the lumbar spine, and you know, and, okay. and you get this anterior pelvic tilt. I, when I told you I needed to, the the like breathing that. exercises needed to strengthen that transverse muscle, that's the muscle. You've got to consciously thinking about engaging it and holding it all day, and that's how it gets stronger, right? Okay. And then so the the breathing strengthens the one that's weak, and the the balls get in there and roll and and break up that tip of the length and the one that's over dominant, and and then that's how it starts to move. Um, and, and you can correct yourself. Yeah, I'm going to see if there's any questions on the live right here. Anybody watching Facebook Live, make sure you post the questions or comments um, below. I, I know a lot of people are watching, Brian and Clint. How's it going? We're just on the Bula Ball method and owner Rias. Um, South Africa, Australia, now LA, and uh, you cured your back pain. I think that's incredible. And this is something that um, we have a lot of health and fitness owners and experts, professionals watching. Is this something that they can recommend to their clients um, just to add even more benefit to them? Oh, definitely, definitely. Your, your, your clients are going to see um, much faster results. If, 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 you're, if you're working with a client, so, so here's a great example. Physical therapists are always working with you and saying, hey, look, I want you to go home and do these exercises. But the amount of times that we go back and do those exercises are, are not – enough right right if you're working with a physical therapist or a strength and conditioning coach or a fitness expert and you're doing this when you're not working with them um, you're going to see some fantastic results much faster than anything else because it's like yeah. a homework yeah. program right it's like the yeah, exactly it's like someone's already i've already figured out exactly what you need to do you just need to do it and you're going to get the benefits out of it all right, so um, thanks for putting yourself through all the pain for us. Uh, what, uh, all right, so let's talk about me. I have herniated disc, um, constant back pain. Where, which, where do I start? Do I go for the seven inch, five inch? What's the difference there? You know, you know, they're, they're actually they're better together because you can you, you can use okay. the you know the the five inch ball is going to it's going to be deeper so if i was treating you as a as a manual therapist like my elbow would get in a lot deeper right so that would be the five inch ball if i was going to use the palm of my hand to get in and treat you that would be the seven inch ball and i think they both have benefits i i actually think they're, they're better together okay um but i also think you know you're starting down a path of of self-care um self-treatment self-healing i think those two balls they're just an introduction to to, cool. to something that you need to establish if you want to go on and, and live a healthy life into your 50s and 60s where you still want to be moving and be active um and you'll end up getting a foam roller or you might get a you know 
from the foam roller, you might get the PVC pipe. Like I work out on the, the, the black PVC pipe because I, I need to get in a deeper tissue. Um, I like the smaller uh, lacrosse balls. Um, I like the even smaller rubber balls. I like the, um, you know, there's so many products that have come out. The Theracane is one of the first products I ever bought, which is a great product to get in and crunch the neck up. I don't know if, uh, and I've got this great little roller I don't know if you want me to show you, I can get it and let you have a look at it. But I think once you start digging in and figuring out what's happening beneath the skin, you're going to become more curious. You're going to want to find more tools that you can help um, uh, break it, break that tissue up. So I think buying both the balls is a good start. You know, if you're serious about moving in that direction. Um, and then the DVD, if you know, the, you can buy the single DVD, uh, the, the bull ball, lower back and legs. Okay. And then you can follow along there, you know, I, I, and I think the DVD too, it's a good, it's a, it's a good way to introduce you to the exercises you need to do. And then the way I target the muscle. So if we're looking at the um, hamstring, I like to target the, the connective tissue on the insertion and then for a period of time. So, so connective tissue doesn't, it takes up to two minutes to get the best out of a, to hydrate the connective tissue because the connective tissue is a sealed system. It's the fluid in that tissue, it's there for life. The only way to get the fluid out is to compress it. So when you go, when you go to the connect, uh, you know, the connection on the hamstring where the connective tissue becomes a lot thicker, and, and you sit on that area and you can compress the tissue, what science is saying is you will, after, after two minutes, you start to squeeze the fluid out of that tissue. And then when you move away from that area and it, it expands, like a sponge, it takes in new blood that's, that has more um, water, it has more oxygen. And that's how the tissue um, becomes hydrated and becomes more elastic, elastic elasticity, plasticity. Yeah. So I'd attack the insertion first and then I attack the belly of the muscle and then I attack the other insertion. So, um, and that, and that offers a much better release. Um, well, Reese, you're, you're the expert. I think we should all just keep following you and listening to what you say of this. <laughs> I don't but know. I'll be happy thank, with that. Thank you for taking the time on your day to join me for the interview. I really appreciate it. And I do want to encourage anyone watching, you know, find a trusted health coach like Rias, find a mentor or somebody that's experienced it themselves and um, either has created a product or a business that can help you, you know, tr try to find somebody that works good with you, someone you relate to. And that's why we bring you these interviews so you can meet, you know, health business owners like Rias and uh, hopefully hire him or just seek him, follow what he's doing and uh, just give, show him some support. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, yes. Yeah, thanks so much. And anybody watching, uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions for Rias also. So thanks again, Rias. Thank you, Brad.